Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Spaced Out Radio's Cryptid Tales. My name is Amber Beckrude, and today I have something extra special for you guys. Now, this was one of the comments actually down below on my last video. This particular case was not seen by just one person or two or three, but dozens, if not more than 30 people all at once on the same night and it's still unexplainable. I would love to bring to you guys the Hopskinville Goblins case. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with it, we will of course go through some background on it. What makes it so exciting for me is that not only are goblins creatures that really fascinate me, it's the fact that these creatures may not actually be goblins, but extraterrestrials. They have been classified in the past during uh, investigations as extraterrestrials instead of actual goblins by definition. August of 1955, yep, yeah, we're going back all the way to 1955, August 21st, there was a family of about seven people. That family had another family with them, which in total had five adults and seven children. That night, they woke up to something incredibly terrifying. The group reported once making it to the police station that they had seen a flying saucer go over their farm and land near their farmhouse. After some time, these little men emerged out of this flying saucer and started terrorizing them. Now, the creatures in question never actually entered the house. They never actually touched anybody or did anything to them, but they made quite a stir. After trying to deal with these goblins or ETs, they decided that they were going to try and take some uh, extreme measures, I guess, into getting rid of them. They decided to get their guns and try firing at them through the house. Now, of course, that just started putting bullet holes in the farmhouse walls and apparently, according to the report, did not actually affect any of these little creatures. They picked up, ran to the sheriff's station, got the sheriff's attention and said, hey, you need to come out. We're being terrorized. Please come help us. The sheriff packed up with 20 officers and headed back to the house. Once arriving at the house with the family, the officers found no evidence that anything had been around them whatsoever, except for the bullet holes in the walls of the farmhouse. Then, as the officers were hanging out and trying to calm the family down, activity picked up yet again and all 20 officers and the sheriff all experienced the same thing. Little creatures roaming around, making weird noises. The officers tried their best to shoot at the creatures but could either not hit them or it would do no damage. Now, the Hopskinville goblins are considered to be about three feet tall, silver in color, or wearing something metallic. Of course, if they were ETs, then if they're wearing spacesuits, why not be something metallic, really? And they moved in a way as if they were walking through water. Then they also almost seemed to float and would disappear and reappear in places without any explanation as to how they got there in the first place. These goblins have been seen by over 30 people on that night alone. Other people in another state also reported seeing the goblins a few days later. These goblins have not been seen since, but you can see them today in popular media uh, platforms, including our ever so favorite and lovely Pokemon. It inspired the design of Sableye, who is one of the extraterrestrial type Pokemon and a psychic type at that. 
And there is talk that it did also inspire the story of E.T. Now, I love that movie as a kid, and I'm sure most of you did as well, as well as potentially being the inspiration for one of the creatures in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 zombies that you do encounter. Who knows? Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. I certainly would love to, but also would not love to encounter these little goblins. I think it would be interesting to see them in person, but I also don't want to know what they wanted with any of us. I think what makes this case so different in terms of people seeing it and people experiencing it and what people are bringing forward is that multiple people experienced it, but there were also multiple beings. So not only did multiple people experience it all at once, including members of the law, but there were also multiple goblins that were affecting this entire scenario. So I think that it gives it a little bit more credibility to 30 plus people saw it all at the same time. And there were 30 plus creatures. And I think you would know the difference even in the dark or dusk or whatever time of day it is that, you know, a possibly five plus foot tall police officer is not the same as a three foot tall, weird looking creature with pointy ears and big glowing eyes and skinny limbs. Now these creatures may still be out there or that may have been the only time we will ever see them. You never know. Maybe they are waiting for the next opportune moment and maybe it'll be one of you that sees them. If you guys have had any encounters like this, please leave them down below in the comments because I would love to know what happened. If they're still out there, what do they want from us? If you guys have anything that you want me to check out, please also leave that down below in the comments because I would absolutely love to cover cases like this one that you bring forward to me. I would like to give a absolutely huge shout out to Ron Bumblefoot Thaw for giving us this amazing music. I absolutely adore it and I think it fits in with our theme so well. Also, you guys can check out Spaced Out Radio here on YouTube every single day of the week or tune in live on Spreaker or on your local radio station at 9 p.m. Pacific and listen to what Dave has to say with all of these amazing guests. Again, my name is Amber Beckrude. You can find me on social media at all of these links as well as Spaced Out Radio on all of these ones. And I cannot wait for our next episode.